All right, we're back to talk about the bear, primarily looking at season two, but also touching on some of season one. The bear is created, co-written by Christopher Storr. Uh, season two, just a short recap before we jump into where we left things. Season two, the bear focuses on chefs Carmen Brazado, Sydney Adamu, trying to open their new restaurant, The Bear, that takes the place of Carmen's family restaurant, which was known in season one as The Beef. It's a restaurant that his brother left to him. Uh, the kitchen crew, including Cousin Richie, Marcus, Tina, Ibrahim, all return for the second season. They're part of the plan to make this new fine dining establishment work. Carmi's sister, who is quite pregnant, agrees to be their project manager. Neil Fack returns to do uh, everything they need him to do. He's their Mr. Fix-It as they get this thing up off the ground. Uncle Cicero is funding part of the project, but has given them a very tight timeline and expects quick and positive results. And a lot of standout episodes from season two, we get a family reunion that goes horribly wrong. Carmi finds opportunities for Marcus, for Cousin, for Tina, all grow in their abilities and in their confidence while they race to try to meet the deadline to open for a friends and family night at the Bear. Meanwhile, Carmi begins a relationship with an old high school friend in Clear, but all along doubts his ability to be a successful fine dining chef while also being able to have a life outside the restaurant. Season two ends with a successful service at Friends and Family Night, but with Carmi locked in a refrigerator, angry at himself. He tried to make both things in his life work. Uh, should we talk about where we are with these characters? Should we talk about, I mean, obviously that gets us into sort of the Carmi Claire aspect. What should we what should we start with here? Yeah, I mean, I think in general, running through the characters would be a, a good idea. Um but also, right, you know, you wrote on season two um, and looking at your recap for the finale of season two, you ended with a bunch of questions. Hey, right? right. so they had questions heading into season three. Um, it's been about a year. We don't we don't necessarily have to use this to structure everything. But your first question was, what happens the day after between Carmi and Claire? What, what does this day look like? How does the voicemail we heard impact him? And would Claire ever take him back? Thoughts there? I mean, we know we've seen the trailer for season three. We do know that Clary is in it. Yeah, we do. We, we I think they purposefully leave out a lot, a lot of or any of their interaction, Carmi and Claire, sort of how they are trying to resolve or not resolve things. We, you know, one, one of the details of Carmi being locked in that fridge at the end is I think he calls the, the, the fact that he tried to make that work, he called himself stupid forever thinking that it would, it, it, it could work, that he could rise to this level of creating this elite restaurant, but also have this successful relationship outside. Of course, Claire's right outside the door. Here's all of this. Well, and she hears him say that their relationship was a waste of his time. Waste of, that's what it is. Yeah, a waste of time. Yeah. Ouch. I mean, not, and and <laughs> in the real world, how can you come back from that? I don't know. Uh -huh. um, but uh, what will Storer and company do to try to resolve this? Um I don't know. It, it, for me, season uh, much of season two was about Carmi trying to walk that line between these two lives. I, I don't know how much they'll focus on that. It will certainly be there. I don't yeah. know how much of it will be about, oh, you know, can I, again, think about how to make both of these sides of my life work? Well, I, mean, I guess this, this first question actually opens up a lot of the things I've been interested want to talk about, um, including what you were just saying, right? So, but first, on, on the Carmi and Claire question, um, Look, cards on the table. I hope that they reconcile. Me too. Not everyone out there feels that way. You know, I was motivated to write like this whole article in defense of Claire after season <laughs> two. And someone just rather recently commented on it and were like, oh, but, you know, read this other article someone else wrote about how you're wrong. Um. So there's that. But, I mean, even, even so, I have no expectation that they're going to reconcile quickly or easily or anything like that. And maybe they won't at all. But if they do reconcile in season three, I would guess season three finale or something, not the premiere, not the first episode. I, I, okay. Yes, we are in complete agreement about that. I, I will be very disappointed this show has them back together in a happy place at the end of, of episode one. That just does not seem like that's going to happen. I, I don't think so at all. I don't think so at all. Um, and in, in fact, I'll say this further, if they did that, then I might start thinking, 
that these people out there who are calling Claire's character uh, Manny Pixie Dream, Manic Pixie Dream Girl Trope character, maybe maybe you're right if they yeah. make it that easy, but I don't think that they will. Um, but that it does feed into um, one of my questions about season three. The big theme, it seemed to me, in season two in particular, was something along the lines of what you were saying about work, life, balance, or however mm. we put that. Yep. But part of what I enjoyed is it felt nuanced and not like it was taking a straightforward line in terms of, you know, it was it was Carmi who kept thinking that he had to choose between his work and Claire, as it right. were. But he was kind of doing that to himself. And there are a lot of indications that he didn't necessarily have to make that choice if he wasn't so caught up in his own damage about having to make that choice. Yeah. But it's but it's really kind of unclear because even with the other characters, this actually gets to your second question at the end of uh, uh, your recap article. Um, with what well, they do with Marcus at the very end, where um, there's a whole thing with Marcus and his mother and in the closing montage, I recall, you see uh, his phone ringing and there's this kind of implication that something very bad has happened to Marcus's mother. Yeah. Um, so we can talk about that specifically, but also I'm wondering, what are they doing with this theme? And is that a theme that's really going to carry through for the rest of the series in terms of this kind of question of whether being super successful with the restaurant means you know that you can't yeah cutting out personal life or or, or what so a couple of, couple of thoughts on that um I, I i do wonder how they will address sort of this work life thing because as i understand it and I've sort of read about this and in trying to be better about you know how I approach this show. I read the Unreasonable Hospitality, the book that um, comes from for the idea of this Forks episode. Um, most of these elite Michelin star chefs say you cannot be at that level of fine dining and then have you know I'm going to spend my sixty hours a week doing that and then go have a very happy, successful fruitful personal life outside of that. It's like they're doing this all day, every day. And yeah. so does the show deviate from that and say, oh, no, actually, you know, the reality is we believe that that can, that that can happen. I don't know if they'll go that way because I don't know if they're going to address it as, okay, we can be, we're going to add happiness to both layers, to both owning a restaurant and having a successful, um, mentally healthy, emotionally healthy personal life um it's almost like they're causing Carmen and others in the show to choose and i'll just sort of see if that's sort of the direction that they 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 take you can have one or the other that doesn't touch on the mark thing if you're doing to talk about but i'm just sort of interested to see if that's where they go with it yeah and i mean this is where i'm at like so i kind of hope not because i thought part of what made season two so great was the was the kind of nuance maybe i have to say more to try to clarify what i have in mind here I think what you're saying, look, it's a real problem, right? I'm not at all trying to deny that that is a real thing, that you can talk to these, you know, Michelin-level chefs in the real world, that they do will say things like this and so on and so forth. Um, but I don't know that that necessarily means it's true, yeah. but it's also a question of uh, how do you think about it? And that would be, in a way, I guess, that cuts beyond whether you're a chef or some other kind of professional who's very committed to their work and perhaps working very long hours, you know. What about, you know, does that mean, yeah, hey, you're not spending time with your family, you don't have time for love, or, uh, you know, is it a choice or, or something like that? Yeah. You know, I, I thought that part of what, part of what I felt like season two was doing, there was at least this thematic line suggesting that it's not necessarily a choice or that it's wrong to make that kind of dichotomy, you know, or, or something like that in that theme about every second counts mm -hmm. and everything. Well, that's whether you're at work or not, you know, like you could take that lesson 
yeah. that way that it's well you know wh- whether it's that you're working the shift at the restaurant or you're engaging in interpersonal relationships you know with people that you care about and so yeah. on every, every second counts right so like even if even if you're not spending a ton of time with that loved one what time do you have and are you giving the appropriate attention to them in that time that you do have, however limited, right? Yes. I think they yeah. were kind of opening up that theme, but then some of this stuff makes me worry that they are going back to more of a binary choice. Because that would be a simpler story. Yeah, so I, I think it just circle back to, to Marcus for a second on that, on that exact point. I, I think that you're right, and they will address this particularly around this theme of every second counts. I think what they're setting up, I personally believe, having not seen anything, that Marcus will be will have a bigger presence in this season. Um, and I wonder if they're going to make his, his choice, well, maybe more binary than the others, but I didn't spend the seconds that counted with my mother. I was here trying to make this work. Look what it cost me. I couldn't be there when whatever it is that happened to her you know, if she passed away or something tragic happened um, and how will that affect him personally? How will that affect him professionally? I, I, I think that they'll really explore that this, this season um, and, and look towards him as sort of that, you may will move slightly off of Carmine City in that regard and we'll push him more towards other folks like Marcus and, and cousin. That's just my perception. I, I don't know if that's the case, but I would be interested to see that, I guess, if they go that way. Yeah, same. I mean, all the characters are great. So um I'd love to see more of Marcus. That was really a almost throw in in that montage. Oh no, something bad's happened to Marcus's mother. So I'm curious to see what they do with that. And I guess what we're talking about right now, Ryan, is my big question for season three. Yeah. When they've been playing with this theme, work-life balance theme, however we might want to give that yeah. a shorthand, what do they do with that? Um, because I think what they were doing with that in season two is for the most part something that I found really compelling and really, really interesting because it was grappling with the complexity of the problem. Mm-hmm. But I also feel like there's a risk where the show could oversimplify it. Yeah. And um, I hope they don't, I guess is what I'm saying. I I don't get the impression that that will happen. I don't see this as a, as a show that's going to take steps back. I think that we've been adding layers of complexity and layers of depth to characters and layers of motivation for each of these and sort of why they want to do what they do. So I don't anticipate that that will, that that will happen. I think that the focus on so many individual characters in specific episodes last year will lead us more towards now that we know sort of what they're doing, why they're doing it and what their motivations are, let's pursue their role in this more. Um, and I think that's, I think we'll see, we'll, we'll certainly see some of that. Yeah. And personally, I would love to have more um, kind of one character mm-hmm. episodes like that. So we'll see what we yeah, get. That's, that's so, where season two was, was so, so great. I, I mean, it's, it's, entertaining when you have the service is entertaining when you're trying to you know get the gas lines to work and some of the comedic elements that go along with that but when you were really, really focused on marcus and tina and cousin and all these folks it was that's what season two was at its best right and that's that to try to put a bow on this to some extent that that's kind of what i'm saying is you could say the bears a show about a restaurant mm-hmm. but we all know it's really a show about every second counts or uh, how do you grapple with past trauma moving into the future and interpersonal relationships and all of that. Right. Um, This is something, you know, in my finale recap, and I think in all the pieces that I wrote on this season, everything in my mind for season two kept pointing back to a conversation that cousin and Carmi had in the first 10 minutes of that first episode where they talk about purpose, about purpose. Yeah. He's reading this cousins, reading this book, trying to figure out, what am I here to do? Why am I here to do it? And this idea of purpose, yeah, sort of fits right into these themes of what you're what you're talking about here. Right. Yeah. Uh looking back again at your questions on the restaurant front. Uh you say Carmi wanted nothing to do with food critic reviews in season one. Will he need them for the restaurant to survive in season three? Signs point to yes. 
<laughs> Signs point to absolutely yes. Yeah. So much so that I think that we've seen in the trailer, they have pictures of food critics on the wall. I mean, my understanding is these high level restaurants definitely do this. They have the pictures of the food critics on the wall. So they know when these people come in, it's, it's you know, it, it's emergency mode activated. We've got to make sure we're doing everything right. And they are doing their best to try to service those so they can get good reviews. They can get, you know, the, whatever the, the ratings or the stars or whatever it is. Um, it, this is like not a doubt that this is part of what season three is going to be. Yeah, I think so. And also to jump to the last bullet point you have here in your season two finale recap, um, you say it's sure to be the MacGuffin in season three. Can the bear become profitable enough in less than 15 months? So Garmy can pay back Uncle Jimmy the $800,000 debt. Yeah. This Seems is, like, yeah, that, that's going to structure it. This is Chekhov's financial deadline. You, you can't just throw that out there and not make it, you know, part of what they're trying to do. They have to turn this place into a profitable restaurant in a certain number of months or Jimmy's, you know, I'm pulling out. I'm, you know, you're going to owe me the loan, you know, whatever it is. He, yeah. And Jimmy, you know, he's an interesting character because on the one hand, he almost seems like a cutthroat mobster. Yeah. <laughs> but on the other hand, he's, he really is like a family member type who cares about them. Yes. You know, so uh, it's an interesting dynamic. And um, I do wonder. So th this is, a callback to there's a scene in the finale that's a callback to Forks and it's a callback to um, fishes where Uncle Jimmy talks about his dad getting him a chocolate banana. Richie goes and learns about a reasonable hospitality and he gives them that chocolate banana in the finale. Mm -hmm. So I, I do wonder if there are some incentives or motivations changed by Uncle Jimmy in the new season. Whereas, oh, I see what this could be. Or where this is headed. So even if they don't meet a uh, arbitrary deadline, we're still going to keep keep going here. I don't know. I'd like to see what his thoughts are after experiencing that kind of service or that type of um, environment that they had in the finale. My read on it, and part of why I think he's he's sort of an interesting character, is my read on it is he really does want them to succeed, but it's still got to be successful. And if it's not successful, the business side of him is going to win out and that he's very much the kind of guy who will say at that moment, it's not personal. I love you. It's yeah. business. Your business failed. Game over. I, I, you I agree with you. I think it's it's very circular in, in this regard and that they have to be successful. They have to turn a profit. They have to be able to meet some of these things they're trying to do. That means that they have to impress these critics, which means they have to get the good ratings. Which means they have to get more people, which then in turn, it sort of creates this circle of things they're trying to achieve so that they can keep him on board with all this. Yeah, yeah. Um, eh, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna halfway kind of skip to your last two questions, but also talk about them in a different way. Um, one is about Natalie; she's gonna be a mother. Mm -hmm. What kind of mother will she be? The other one's about um, Richie and Carmi uh, and their fight. Right. So we should recall they have a falling out also at the end of the season two finale. Connecting these two questions in a certain way is that. Richie calls Carmi Donna. <laughs> and Donna, of course, is Richie's mother, played by Jamie Lee Curtis in the Fishes yes. episode. Um, so I think that cuts. But I would guess that Richie and Carmi will more or less, in contrast to the Claire, what I said about yeah. Claire, Richie and Carmi, I think they'll mend fences relatively quickly. Yeah, I, I think that they they have to to make this thing work you know it almost seems like they're creating this this uh i don't know this triarchy to use a to use a game of thrones word where th game of thrones word where carmy sydney and cousin have to be in sync for this thing to yeah to, to and work well. i mean the thing about richie and carmy you think about their relationship there has always been tension between them and will always be tension between them, I think, but they're cousins. Yeah. Are, are, are they really cousins or just call each other no, cousins? They're just, cousins. He's just, he's just, yeah, colloquially, nominally cousin. They, they, yeah, but that's almost more powerful, right? Like the, 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 the decision that we are cousins, what does that imply? The fact that they still call each other cousin. We are family, meaning that, look, even if, we totally you throw forks at each other. Yeah. We're still family. We're still kind of back, you know, uh, next yeah. year. 
for come back for Christmas next year, right? That's right. That's you right. don't get out of that. So, um, do you think we'll see Jamie Lee Curtis again in this season? I, I'm going to say yes. I yeah. think we see. We know we see John Bernthal. We've seen him in the trailer. Uh-huh. I think we see this some of this crew of people, the sort of the cameo fest of episode six last year. I think we see several of them this year um, or this year, this season. Yeah, I just, I, I wonder sometimes if Bernthal would have been back in season two if season one had not been this massive, massive hit, right? But when you're attached to something like this, it's like, yeah, I want to be a part of this family, a part of this conversation. I want to be, you know, to use you know, my kid's phrase, get the flower for these kinds of things, because it's so, you know, it's just so predominant, so culture, culturally relevant. So I, I think we'll see some of them in the season this this uh, this time. Yeah, I mean, it certainly seems from the things that I read that the people in Fishes, they, they all wanted to do this show. You know? Yeah. Um, so I don't know that that's the question. Narratively, we saw Donna again in the season two finale. She is like trying to show up for the family night, um, but then she can't do it. And you have that scene. Yeah. We're all talking about this with you before last year between her and Pete. That it's Pete is the one who who knows that she was there. <laughs> Sugar's you know kind of doofus husband guy, but yeah. then he's covered for her, right? Yeah. No, I, don't I, do it, I was glad in the finale that they did not have some sort of reconciliation or resolution between that family. That leaves it open to potentially, you know, those conversations happening here in this season. That sort of things that we want to face that we have trouble facing between that family um, is still on the table. And that's a, a direction they can drive you know, in, in this season to have Jamie Lee Curtis and some of those things come back into play because they weren't resolved at all in season two. Yeah. One, I, you wonder because alternately uh, Natalie and Carmi might be sitting there going, you know, if she didn't come to family night. We're just, yeah. not, we don't want anything to do with her basically, yeah. you know, um, it'll be sad if the bit with P is the last thing that we see. And, but I think they'll do something. I do think they'll do something because you know, Pete's had to swallow that and, Pete is gonna slip. Pete is gonna say something. You know, you know who he is. I mean, he just yeah. he, he can't he can't hold stuff in. We've we've seen that already. He can't. You're right. He can't. There'll be some scene where like Nat's complaining about how Donna didn't come, and he just can't keep it in anymore, and <laughs> he lets it slip. But you know, still, it's a big, it's a narrative question that I wanted to ask and talk about because I do think that the actors involved, and this would include, did I already list names? Bob Odenkirk and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, John Mulaney. Um, the indications are that they, they wanted to do the show, but the other thing that people should recall is, and maybe it'd be easy to forget this because they drop it all at once. Yeah. They kept they kept that under wraps before season two. Before Absolutely. season two was released, people did not know that any of these people were going to be in it. Jamie Lee Curtis, Bob Odenkirk, and so on and so forth, right? Here's, That's my recollection, anyway. That's exactly what, it. There was a complete surprise. I mean, um, we, we were able to see this shortly before the season dropped last year, but yes, complete surprise. There was no announcement. There was nothing. There was the Bob Odenkirk news. Yes. I mean, we, we sort of saw that, but it was in the context of, oh, he might appear and have this role, but it turns out he was in an episode with 15 other cameos that, you know, were, were not announced, were not um, put out in front. I do yeah, want to answer right. it. Of one other particular one, do you think we see Chef Terry, Olivia Coleman this year, this season? No, I don't think so either. But we could, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. It seems like Olivia Coleman's real busy, so yeah. but I don't know how much weight I should put on that because again, if it's like show up for a day to film a scene, maybe she'd really want to do that and want to do it enough. Um, but it's also, I'm not sure how that would fit in into the narrative yeah why would we see her you're gonna send another person to ever to you know to stage you know just, that doesn't make much sense right i mean it's, it's similar with like um oh man the black on this not 
Who, who's the guy? Who's the guy who plays the pastry chef that Marcus goes to? Oh, uh, Will Poulter. Will Poulter. Yeah, I mean, like, be the same. Will we yeah. see him? Is his character going to be in it again? <laughs> yeah. I doubt it. Like, why would he be? Basically, <laughs> you know, um, if there was some reason, maybe you know, but yeah, uh, I don't think that they will just shoehorn in cameos of these characters for fan service or something. I don't. I don't think that they would do that. So. Does exactly. it serve a kind of narrative purpose? I think probably not when it comes to um, yeah, yeah, both those characters. Yeah, very interesting to see. I'm interested to see what they do with Tina this year. Yeah. Tina, of course, went to culinary school. She seemed to be have some incredibly heightened skills um, by the end of the end of the season. I mean, she's obviously not you know at the level of Carmi and, and Sydney, but. Um, she was certainly holding her own when they uh, got down to it, when they were doing doing the service. I think that, you know, she's one of those, you know, you start out as a, you can barely cook mashed potatoes to now she's, you know, at this, at this level, suspend, suspend a little bit of disbelief, but it's one of these arts you, you love to see, you know, you have to have some of those yeah. things. Well, then she's bought in basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where did we leave things with Ibrahim? He came back, right? So he sort of got frustrated at, the, at culinary school left like um, a service window or something yeah so he's going to be like the the to-go guy or the guy that you know get make sure and runs the the window that gives people things when they're coming to pick them up right and so they need someone to manage that i don't know that we see him cook necessarily they seem to hire a few um a few chefs you know it's all what's his name um the one who got fired because he was do, doing cocaine on crowd, yeah so sort of yeah. So we saw a few of those come in. So I think we see Ibrahim more as like a yeah, he's a more of a customer service uh, role this this time. That that's my impression again. Having not seen yeah, him. I think so. I'd kind of like to see him get an episode though, give him, give him huh? focus episode or whatever term we use for that. That would be interesting. He didn't get one. Um, right. Right. So yeah, looking forward to season three of the Bear Man. Um, what else do we have to hit on? I think we oh, we weren't talking about the episode titles at all. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't think it's for those that might consider that spoiler. There are a couple of episode titles that you can look at and say, oh, this person is getting a specific episode based on some of the things we see here. Yeah. Just just from one word, every episode is a one word title or two word title. Um, there are some ones where you can tell this is going to be focused on this person. The more dangerous think... thing might be looking at the very brief episode descriptions that they have up in terms of yeah. spoilers. But I, I do wonder sometimes about these things. Uh, in terms of who writes them and how accurate are they? Yeah. Um, probably with this one more than uh, what I'm thinking about. But I was noticing, I was, we were talking about the traders earlier in the, in the yeah. podcast. And, and I was looking at one of the episode descriptions for the traders and I was like, whoever wrote this episode description has not <laughs> seen this show. <laughs> you know, because it's like, yeah. that's not how it works. I forget exactly what it was, but it was like, the way that they described in the episode description was like did not fit how the show works. Yeah, you know? I, I, I tend so, to try to believe know. those, not just for spoilers, but because of that exact thing you're talking about. I mean, some of these shows, and I'll just use the, the bear of a reference for that. They'll end up with things like Carmi has to solve a problem at the restaurant. You know, that type of you know, just don't tell <laughs> anything. I'd rather see that than give me details that are wrong. Send me in a different way. Uh, it's like I did see one, and I think I think what it said was like Carmi thinks about apologizing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just every episode of the bear. Every <laughs> episode of the bear. Um, cool. So, so yeah. Okay. I think the only thing worth worth saying there is that we know that this season is dropping all at one time. Season three on June twenty seventh. They filmed this season and season four back to back. The thought amongst those of us that are you know mildly informed is that that will be it. There will be four seasons and that will be the end of the show. But that's not certainly not something that's set in stone. But they wanted to sort of capitalize on this momentum of this. They've done it all back to back. So next summer we will get a season four and then it's kind of wait and see what happens after that. Yeah, it does seem likely. They've managed to put out a season each June, I believe. Like, right? Yep. In in our era of everything having disrupted production schedules and um all of that for various reasons they've managed to stay on that kind of yearly schedule so i think that's that's definitely part of why they wanted to 
go ahead and do season four film it back to back or at the same time or i don't know exactly how they did it you know yeah um but we have been told that i would expect then we're going to get season four next june that's their plan here Mm -hmm. and then is that going to be it maybe so i mean even just in terms of thinking about the story i could well see them wrapping up the story after a fourth season so we'll see yeah, I, I I think we'll know more over the next twelve months. Certainly before season four comes out, what's um, what's going to happen, and season three will dictate how much more of a story is left to you know left to tell. I think you know. Right. Exactly. So maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> but like, what is the story that we're telling, and then how much more do you need? It from what we know right now, it kind of feels like okay, two more seasons. I can imagine in my own mind relatively well to, to try to go more than that yeah maybe something else would have to open up to to make it feel like there's more story to tell beyond four seasons so yeah we'll in the end the more i thought about it the more I, I remember writing at the end of season one how entertaining can it be to watch a group of people try to open a restaurant right yeah and the combination of how they were able to do that, plus how they focus on the character specific episodes. And we have to remember, they have not opened a restaurant yet. They are not officially open the last time that we saw them. And really? so we've got the whole, you know, every challenge that will go with the doors opening the restaurant for the first time still to go. So who knows how far we get we get with this story. Yeah, I guess all I'm saying is if we get to the point where the restaurant's open and then yeah. it's not, it, I, I I wouldn't see it ever becoming just a um, a show about them running a restaurant week to right. week. You can only do that for so long and have it still feel like the bear because yeah, they were saying earlier the bear's not really about running a restaurant. The bear's about right. you know you, you can't have a season. How do you where live every, every season? They're trying to gain their next Michelin star. I mean that's just yeah, it's just not the show. Right? You can't just like have a turn it to Top Chef all of yeah. a sudden. Right? That's <laughs> not, not what the show's about. So anyway. Uh, we're looking forward to season three. Again, it comes out on Thursday, the 27th. We will be back on June 28th. Um, look for our podcast to come out in the evening, uh, around whatever the same time this one did. Basically, we're on a pretty normal schedule for the moment. Yep. And um, our current plan is to talk about the whole season next Friday. Um, <laughs> hopefully, we're able to pull that off. We're thinking, look, they drop it all at once. People are going to binge the show. We're going to want to binge the show, even though, in principle, we don't want to binge the show. We want them to release it weekly, and yeah. but they don't, and because they don't, and it's so good, we're going to watch the whole thing. So we're going to presume that we've got the whole thing watched by next Friday. And... Yeah, I say everyone's going to binge it over the weekend. This podcast with the entire season recap will be waiting for you on Sunday or whenever you finish. That's the plan. And then, yeah, beyond that, we, we do want to spend more time with the bear, so we'll have our eyes out for more specific things to focus in on. Um, if you were listening along with us last year, you'll recall we did one on, like, the first half of the season and one on the second half of the season, and then kind of didn't like that in certain ways. So it's using season two as an example, the idea is that we will do the whole season and then maybe have a podcast where we talk about the Forks episode, you know, something like that. We're just wagering that there will be analogous standout episodes in season three or something like that for for us to um, spend a couple more weeks on the bear. I cannot wait. I I literally cannot wait. It's uh, become a very anticipated time of year now, these past three summers waiting (laughs) for this show. Yeah. All right. So we'll wrap it up here. Um, As always, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, please do consider leaving us a good rating, review. If you're on YouTube, you give a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Appreciate it if you do that. Um, check out tvobsessive.com. You can find Ryan's articles on the bear, uh, along with the uh, one article I wrote on the bear, my defense of Claire. Um, and keep an eye out there for um, articles coming up on season three. Also, follow TV Obsessive on social media. We're on X, we're on Facebook, we're on Blue Sky Threads, Instagram, uh, Mastodon, I guess. And um, yeah, we'll see you next week. All right, looking forward to it very much. See you then.